by getting something off of the deck is by using a rope. <laughs> and I'm also on a deck. Okay, so here we have a force problem involving a piano being lowered from the side of a building. Uh, the mass of the piano is 2,300 kilograms, a very large object. And on the top of the building, I just, I'm calling this thing the big machine, which is um, holding this, uh, this piano up. Um, force in a rope or a cable is referred to as tension. So um, the force in this rope here is going to be tension. And then, of course, we have gravity pulling the piano down. Uh, there's no normal force in this situation because the piano is not on a surface. So in the first question, we're asked to find the tension in the cable when the piano is suspended and at rest. Uh, so as we talked about in class, whenever you're doing a force problem, the first thing to do is a free body diagram. So here, so we're, we're solving the first question. Number one, very first thing we do is free body diagram. So here's the piano. Uh, there's only two forces acting. We have gravity down, which I label as mg. That's the equation for force of gravity, also known as the weight of the object. And then the other force is the tension in the cable, which points upward. Uh, the tension is holding the piano up. Uh, and as I, I think I said, there's no normal force here because the piano is not on a surface. I forget if I said that or not. Okay, so this is our free body diagram. And our sign convention is down negative, up positive. That's always important. Okay, so after the free body diagram is done, the next thing we do is we sum our forces. Now, when we have a problem involving x direction and y direction, we need to specify x and y. Uh, here, the only, for, the, the only direction that's involved is the vertical, the y direction. So we're going to sum our forces in the y direction. Uh, and this will look like this, T minus mg, so we're just literally adding these up, tension minus mg, and I, may, I made mg negative because it points down, and <clears throat> Newton's second law tells us that the summation of the forces is always equal to ma. And this is the equation that will allow us to solve the first question. Now, in number one, we're told that the piano is at rest. Now, at rest means that the acceleration is zero. There is no acceleration uh, for the first question because the piano is just hanging there. So what we can do is go to our sum of the forces, cross the A to zero, and we're left with T minus mg. I'm just going to write this out. T minus mg equals zero. So therefore, the tension in the cable must be equal to mg, which basically makes sense. What we're saying is that the upward, the upward force and the downward force are canceling. They're equal to each other, which is why we have no acceleration. So now we plug in our values. The mass is 2,300 kilograms. And gravity is, now don't, don't make gravity negative here, because uh, up here, we already called gravity negative, right? I'm going to put a circle around this. Right there, we called gravity negative. So don't call gravity negative one, again after you've uh, summed the forces. So this is going to be 9.8 meter per second squared, which gives us a tension of 22,540 newtons. And a newton is equivalent, this guy right here, is equivalent to kilogram meter over second squared, which is what we have here. Kilogram, oops, lost my pen. Kilogram meter per second squared. That's called, that's called a newton. Maggie says you know how to get something off of a deck.
Okay, in the second question, we're told that the tension drops from 22,540, that's when the piano was at rest, just hanging here. So the tension in the cable drops from this, from 22,000 to 20,000. So that's going to create an unbalanced force. Uh, the force in the downward direction will be larger than the force in the upward direction. And we're asked to calculate the time it would take for the piano to reach the ground falling a distance of 20 meters. So this is basically a kinematic problem. Here's what we know. We're told that the initial velocity is zero. So right here it says assume the piano starts from rest. Um, we don't have the acceleration of the piano. It's not going to be gravity because the piano's not in free fall. There's a, an upward tension acting on the piano. We're asked to find the time. That's a question mark. And we have the vertical displacement, which is negative because the piano is going down. Again, our sign convention, down is negative, up is positive. Okay, and we don't have V final. When the piano hits the ground, like the moment before it hits, uh, we don't have that either. Okay, so think of number two. It's a, it's a two-part problem. Uh, the first thing we have to do is we have to find this acceleration. And we can find it from the information that we're given about this, this 20,000 Newton here. So again, always start with a free body diagram. It's going to be the same as what we did in number one. So we have mg down and tension up. And we're told that the tension is 20,000 newtons. Uh, mg is still going to be 22,540. And our sign convention, again, down is negative, up is positive. OK, so there's the free body diagram. The next thing we do is we sum the forces, just like we did in number one. Summing the forces, we have T, which we know, minus mg, and the sum of the forces will always equal ma. Now, the only difference between number one, the, our first question, and the second question is that now the acceleration does not go to zero. In this situation, we will have an acceleration because these two forces are not canceling. The downward force is greater than the upward force. So the acceleration is going to be in the downward direction. Our acceleration will point down. So to find the acceleration, we take this equation, rearrange it. A is going to be equal to T minus mg over m. And now we plug numbers in. So the tension is 20,000. Mg is 22,540. And the mass of the piano is 2,300 kilograms. And this comes out negative, which we expected, because we said the acceleration should be down, being that the downward force is larger. This gives us an acceleration of negative 1.04, oops, sorry, 1.104. Okay, so now that we have this acceleration right here, so this is 1.104 meter per second squared negative. We have this value now. So to find the time becomes a kinematic problem. So we're going to shrink this down. So now that we have the acceleration, we could use um, y equals one-half a 
t squared plus v initial t. That's the first kinematic. We know that the initial velocity is zero. So we can take this and solve for time. And we get an answer of 6.02 seconds for the piano to reach the ground. Now, would the piano be in good shape when it hit the ground? Probably not, because it would be moving quite fast after falling. For, uh, it'd, be, it'd be traveling at over 20 meters per second. So we'd probably have a broken piano.